Hello and welcome to Weekend Wisdom. Today, we're going to talk about inherited IRAs and mistakes you should avoid. So grab your cup of coffee, sit back, and let's get started. Hello, this is Michael Loftus for Wealth and Wisdom TV, where education is the key to a successful financial future. First up, don't forget, click show more for additional information and links to today's video. Also, if you're looking for a different opinion, that of Wall Street and Big TV, please do consider subscribing. So today we're going to talk about IRAs, decedent IRAs, stretch IRAs, inherited IRAs. They're all one and the same. Now, I'm not going to get into details on that. I've done a video on this in the past. Link up top here on what an inherited IRA is. But in short, you have the ability to inherit an IRA and continue it, stretch it through your lifetime. Pretty good. Very simple to do. You just have to be aware of it. Now, some mistakes that we want to avoid. First up, not doing a stretch IRA. So what does that mean? Well, what happens is you could get that IRA. Most people think your option is you have five years or lump sum. Both of those become high tax situations. Next, not taking required minimum distribution. So RMD, required minimum distribution, are for those folks over the age of 70 and a half. If they pass, they pass on the IRA to you, you have to do two things. One, make sure you take an RMD based on the deceased the first year, and you will continue those RMDs, but now on your life expectancy. Next, not splitting it up. So what happens is this. Let's say if you have three kids, one, two, three, one's 50, 45, and 40. If you keep it as one IRA, distributions are based on the oldest child. So obviously you want to split those. So the youngest child takes distributions based on their age versus the oldest child, which means they're taking out less because of the life factors. And we have a chart and a link below to the IRS website to give you those percentages. So next we want to make sure that we title the IRA correctly. So today it's in your name. If you pass, it's going to be John Smith deceased FBO for the benefit of John Smith Jr. Okay. And we also are going to add the deceased age in there. And that's going to factor in as far as distributions as well. The next one is can't contribute to that decedent IRA. Of course, because it's not your IRA, it's the IRA of the deceased. So you cannot contribute going forward. After that is trusting the custodian to give you right advice. Now here's the deal. It is your responsibility in any case for any type of RMDs, titling, whatever. But most people think that the custodian is going to make sure they take care of it. Now as a financial advisor, of course, this is what we do with our clients, but it's not that case if you're dealing directly with the custodian. So next up, have a successor beneficiary. So what happens is you're going to have, you're the owner, beneficiary, contingent beneficiary. What if that person passes, then the successor contingent beneficiary is going to continue it. They cannot refactor. They'll continue it based on your factor. You following me here? Deceased child, let's say grandchild. So now grandchild is going to continue on, but based on their parents, not the grandparents. So it's going to be a higher factor for them. Okay. Next one, please. The most important thing here, beneficiary checkups. We talk about this all the time. Here's a picture of an article years ago, the pension pickle, where a woman did not name her new husband. Okay. As a beneficiary, her sister was guess what? The sister got the money, not the husband, and he had nothing he could do. The bottom line is the custodian is going to follow 
what is on that form. They're going to overrule even what's said in a will because that's a contract between you and the custodian. So a couple things there. Please make sure you update the beneficiaries. Now, some states will allow you to continue. It's called the intestacy laws. It will continue to the heirs. But, and this is a big one, had this happen with one of my clients, they were not named. So we had to go to court. It cost about $6,000 to prove, very easily, but had to be proven and sent back to the custodian that they were the deceased children so they could continue and stretch those IRAs. So it's all about planning, making sure that you always do that. So let's bring this all together. Stretch IRAs, great opportunity, continue your legacy, continue the benefit of tax-free growth in an IRA. The next benefit is you can continue to stretch or, right, continue this decedent inherited IRA through multiple generations, allowing it to grow at a lower tax number because, again, if you're 40 versus 70, the factor is going to be lower on what has to be taken out. So this is all great information. These are easy, easy tools that you can use. All of this is part of the IRS code. You just have to know what to do. Hopefully, this has helped you out today. As always, we appreciate your time. Michael Loftus, Wealth and Wisdom TV.